Let's get into our match, our team selector and our um, match prediction now, guys. And I suppose in goal, we've got to go for one man and one man only. The goal scoring machine, Alison Becker. Uh, Doily, defence, what do you think? Well, Liverpool had 10 players injured at the weekend. Yeah. And I think, I think we can't underestimate how difficult, you know, Theo mentioned the, the players on the bench were, you know, I got a call. And I just said I hadn't brought my boots. It was too late. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> plus I'm absolutely chronic at football, which was, and I can't see. So other than those things. Um, <laughs> um, in fact, yeah, Alisson in goal. I think they can't do anything. Can't, there's very little that they can do. No. With, certainly with Jota being out. I thought they can't rotate the front three really unless somebody gets injured. Midfield's the only place they can rotate. And that depends on what you want to do. Um so defensively, it's just going to be the same again. I mean, the only way he'd possibly change it is if one of the centre backs gets injured, which you'd have to play Fabinho there. But I actually think for this, Billy Matteo was on the bench though yesterday. He might well just get thrown into the. Uh, I, don't know I think it's. Want, I'm just saying. No, I know. I think well, he's uh, he's going to be. He needs the game time to to get ready for the Youth Cup final, which will be uh, yeah. next week probably. Um, no, I think it's that would be totally unfair, wouldn't it? Playing yeah. <laughs> totally and utterly unfair. Um, I think. What might happen is Fabinho ends up being asked to, to step back a few paces and just help out Williams and Phillips in terms of the aerial threat from Burnley. And I think that's the only it will be more of a positional change and a tactical change than um, than any kind of massive you know changes in terms of the actual personnel. I think Liverpool have done quite well. They played. I remember they played four four two there one year and one three one. I think Cater played centre yeah. midfield and had a, had a very good game. I think that's when Joe Gomez broke his leg. I think he was playing right back. So he scored in that, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that was a game that was, was a lot 18, of... 19, wasn't it? That's yeah, yeah. That was about December, wasn't it? So that was a yeah. game where they made changes and it was a midweek game. And I think ideally Klopp would have wanted to do that, but there's only one more game left after this. I think this is in terms of the, the, the legs, this is the trickier one because it's another five, four or five days before they play um Crystal Palace. They'll have played this game, they'll play three games in less than you know, just around about six days. So this will be a tough this will be a tough one in terms of the actual fitness, but I'm not sure what they can do, but they had the defence. It'll be Trent, it'll be Robertson, it'll be Phillips, and it'll be uh, it'll be Reece Williams. Do we, I, I suppose then, in terms of midfield, Theo, is it whether you play Thiago away at Turf Moor or there may be Vinaldum comes into this one, or, or even Curtis Jones? As we said, there really isn't that much wiggle room for what Liverpool can do. Um, well, the only other alternative would be four-two-three-one, and then you have Shakiri in there because I think well, Naby Keita, Oxlade Chamberlain. Oxley chamberlain could return if it's just been illness, but no word on whether Kate is going to be back. And it's just whether you bring Wijnaldum back in. Uh, I think it is getting to that point now, isn't it, where he's the player that's dropping out, that Jurgen Klopp knows he's going to go and he's looking to the future. But at the same time, you will want to protect legs. So you think in that midfield trio, the obvious change is Jones out, Wijnaldum back in. Uh, it depends how Thiago's feeling. Like He's played a lot of 90 minutes recently and he has had a big impact on games. But do you want to save him for Palace or do you want to have him against Burnley? Uh, I'm just going to assume that he can power through. And then if he's tied for Spain at the Euros, who cares? That's their problem. So Thiago can keep his place. Fabinho can keep his place and Genie in for Jones. You go with that, Doyle? No, I think Milner will play. I think Milner will play. Yeah, I think Klopp said that he was expecting it to be back. I think okay, this Milner is can come in as well then. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, he can have 12 players. <laughs> uh, Thiago can have a rest then if Milner's back. All right. Um no, I think you see you just told me to play in Thiago now. Um <laughs> I think it'll be a game where the where the subs will be crucial. I think they will change the midfield. I would I I think Fabinho and Thiago and Milner will start. And I think possibly Milner and Thiago will go off at some point for one Alderman Jones. Because once you go past that, I mean there's Shakiri, as Theo says, and then there's not really a lot else. I mean it was interesting, wasn't it, that Origi was on the bench on Sunday, and despite the fact Liverpool needed a goal in you know, the last few minutes, he wasn't thrown on. Although, to be fair to him, he hasn't played since March, and he was only restarted training, I think it was on Tuesday, it was the first time we saw him in it. Um, perhaps he was just on the bench to make up the numbers, or just in case something absolutely ridiculous happened. Or, well, which you could argue that it did did happen, but in terms of in terms of actual peak players being injured and then having to, having to come on. So, yeah, I think, I think Milner will play. Uh, Thiago, Fabinho, and then the front three is the front three because what else is there? Yeah, I was going to say voice of authority with Thiago Jota's season-ending injury, albeit we don't really know how long it is, but with a week left of the season, that is going to be that then. So the front three, Salah, Firmino and Mane. Um, 
match result then. Doily, I'll let you go first. What, what's the scoreline going to be? I think I've, I think a lot is going to depend on that Chelsea game, you know. Yeah. Because I actually, if Leicester win, I'm, although I don't think that they will, I actually thought it's like the, the thing about Alisson going up, it was, what made it interesting is that a draw wasn't the worst result ever for Liverpool yesterday. I know it wasn't the perfect result, but if they'd have lost, it wouldn't have given them any kind of, you know, they would have been totally reliant on, you know, your snooks or something like that. But a draw would have only went one minor slip up by one of the other teams, but certainly by Chelsea or possibly by Leicester, and that might have been enough, which is what makes me think a draw is not a, a terrible result at Burnley, but you can't be looking at draws at this time of the season. You know, it, it is rare that Liverpool end a season with five wins in a row. I think it's only happened twice in the Premier League era. Some, you know, certainly in, in, in terms of... Three times, weren't they, in commentary? Yeah. Three, three, twice three, under Rafa, once under Klopp. Well, it, it's definitely 2006. And it's also definitely 2019. In terms of winning the last three or the last two, the last three is definitely if they did it under Benitez and other times as well, but they're the only times in the Premier League year, which is always it always amazes me because you know Liverpool so often have, have things to play for, but in, you know that's what makes me think that not Chelsea and Leicester. I know they can't win both win against each other, but that's what that's what didn't make. I wasn't surprised when you saw say Le- Leicester drop some points and Chelsea lost against Arsenal. Oh, I because, saw nine the other one by the way. Sorry to interrupt. Was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. because. Because it's so it's such a tense time, and often teams aren't used to playing for things at this time of the season. And obviously, players are tired, and players are coming in and out. And you have that kind of the variable of like we saw against West Brom, the other team might not have anything to play for, but they they put in a performance because just because they can There's to remind everybody that they can still play football. So, in answer to your question, um, <laughs> so you bought yourself some yeah. time there, Doyle. Yeah. Score yeah. In, answer, in answer to your question, three one to Liverpool. Three one, Theo. Uh, 2-1 Liverpool. I'm going to think it's going to be very similar to the West Brom game. Uh, no, don't or... say that. Don't <laughs> Alex, say that. I know you can't. <laughs> not quite that. <laughs> you wait 129 years for a goalkeeper to score one. <laughs> <laughs> and then he comes around and gets 2 Yeah, two. considering the last two, I think you, you wouldn't be surprised if Burnley took the lead, but then Liverpool could fight back. Uh, Burnley, they've got what, like Sir Chris Wood, don't they? Ashley Barnes. Uh, those are the sort of players you could see causing Liverpool problems. Um, and then you'd like to think that Liverpool can find a way. It's been an all right ground for them in recent years. Like they got a good win there, didn't they? Last was it August, September, and then obviously the one we've already mentioned a couple of seasons back. Uh, it's been a good ground for for me, you know, for Salah Mane. Hopefully, two one win, that'll be enough. And then uh, all for it, another seven nil win against Palace on the last day in front of the home fans. Yeah, three of the last four wins have come from conceding the first goal and coming back. I don't know how many more times they can afford to really try and pull off that trick, but we'll have to wait and see how it does play out. That's it for this edition of the Blood Red podcast. My thanks as ever goes to Ian Doyle and Theo Squires for joining me and you two for listening and watching in wherever it is you have joined us. But until next time here on Blood Red, it's bye for now.